In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. It's lovely to welcome everyone today. A uh, reminder that uh, today's service is going to be um, a hope service of Holy Communion, and as per last week, there are certain ways we have to conduct ourselves. Uh, you, you have to wear a mask for the service. I don't. But when it comes to the distribution of communion, I have to wear a mask and you can remove yours to receive. Okay? So that's one of the things. And I'll be giving out communion from here and we'll follow the, the arrows. We have a, a one-way system. So please make sure you're suitably spaced in the queue uh, and return to your seat uh, by the other routes. Don't bump into people on the way, on the way through. And, and obviously, at the moment, because of the hygiene precautions, we're, simple, we're just uh, distributing bread only. And, uh, I get to receive. Next week is is, is actually our uh, we're, at, we're all being well. Uh, we're going to have our harvest festival, uh, and uh, there's there's a little slip to take home about donations and so on. And last uh, the, last year, I think it was last year's harvest festival, we learned this song, uh, "Come You Thankful People, Come," which is not the hymn. Uh, but uh, but a, a modern song that uses that as a call to worship. Uh, so it goes like this. come to praise God, we've come to worship him, we've come to gather in his presence, and we've come to hear his word and share in the sacrament of Holy Communion. And so as we prepare for that, let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing for all. Let us come to him in sorrow for our sins, seeking healing and salvation. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> so as God's forgiven people, we stand to say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that always abiding in you they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. The reading is taken from the letter of Paul to the Philippians, chapter 1, beginning at verse 21. For to me, living is Christ, and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labour for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whether I come and see you, or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing. 
for he has graciously granted you the privilege, not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire labourers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the labourers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the labourers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you've made them equal to us, who've borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Gracious God, we pray that by your Holy Spirit you would open your word to our hearts and our hearts to your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. It's only a few weeks since this reading came up for one of our midweek services, so there's an element of deja vu for me today. I feel I've been here before, and that's because I have. Uh, however, we weren't all present that day, uh, so hopefully this is fresh for some of us, and hopefully those of you who were, uh, what I've put together today isn't a, isn't a straight repeat of what I said then. That's not a very fair way to treat people, said one of my church members in Coventry, and she said, said goodbye at the door. She was someone who had a real sense of justice for the working person. She was disturbed about the unfairness of this parable, which we had heard read during the, during the service that day. There were people who had been working all day long, only getting paid the same as those who got roped in for the final hour of the working day. How could Jesus be condoning such an apparent unfairness in the remuneration of workers? Perhaps you felt that too, as you heard the story. It's not great uh, industrial relations, is it? <clears throat> but first of all, we should notice that this story is a parable. But it's taken very much from a real-life scenario. Men, and in those days it would be men, went down to the marketplace in the hope of a day's work. <clears throat> and the estate managers were sent to recruit the workers who looked the most promising. We can imagine that some got work because they had a good reputation or a good relationship with the landowner. New people probably sometimes got overlooked unless they looked fit and strong for the labour required. Some would get left behind, wait, waiting around in the hope that more help might be needed later, or someone would have to go home sick or injured and a replacement would be found. Some would get no work at all that day. And in a society with no benefits, no welfare, no working contracts, at no workers' protection, it was a fragile existence. 
upset a manager and there would be no work tomorrow. Get ill and there would be no income until you were better. Get an injury, you might never earn again. That would mean people had to beg or steal to survive unless they had family or friends who could help them. And if all these, this seems ancient history, the same thing was true for, uh, for dock workers, for example. They used to go down to the docks daily for, to see what work there was in much more recent times in our own country. And I think it's also true that migrant workers today still get work in terms of you know, being picked to go and uh, get in the van and go off to the fields with, uh, by team leaders at, at, at their whim. So Jesus uses this vivid scene, familiar to his listeners, and presents them and us with very strange behaviour by the employer. As I said already, there's no, no way to guarantee uh, good uh, work relationships between boss and, and, uh, and, the, and the working team. Uh, you're not going to have a coherent workforce uh, if, uh, in, in that cir- circumstance. You can't run an economy like this. And how stupid is the proprietor to pay excess amounts of money to the latecomers when he could have got away with a fraction of a day's work and they would have been happy? Or at least they would have accepted it uh, as part of the deal. And that's why we need to stop and remind ourselves that this is a parable. Jesus isn't telling this story to tell us how to run a vineyard. He's explaining something about the qualities and the principles of the kingdom of heaven. In other words, he's explaining what God is like and how God treats his people. And we know that Jesus would have in mind listeners who thought that they were definitely first in the queue for any rewards that God might be giving out. Remember the parable of the prodigal son. People argue, you know, should it be called the prodigal son, or should it be called the loving father, or should it be called the parable of the jealous brother? <laughs> you can give it all three titles, they all fit. Uh, because Jesus tells that, in that, towards the end of the parable, he talks about how the older brother looks on with jealousy as the wayward son is welcomed home. How he resents his father's generosity to him and good treatment that the brother receives. And he completely fails to appreciate what he already has. And I think that this is trying to give a similar lesson. But how does that work? Hmm. Have you ever been to one of those uh, church buffets? You know, there's, there's loads of cakes and sandwiches, and there's a really nice cake. <laughs> and you're in the queue. And it's cut up into eight pieces, and about three have gone. And there's about nine people ahead of you. And you're thinking... Do you think they're all going to take one? Or will I get there and get that tasty cake along with the rest of my uh, plateful? Yeah. You're willing people to walk past, don't you? you know, uh, so you're hoping three people in front of you are on the diet. Uh, uh, and uh, because there's only so much cake to go around of that particular variety. Jesus is teaching us that God isn't like that, and neither are the gifts that he gives. God doesn't have a limited supply of love, grace, forgiveness, or his Holy Spirit. It won't run out if other people get there first. And it won't go short if lots of other people find him after us. Nothing will be taken away from us by other people benefiting from what we have already discovered. God's grace isn't like cake at a buffet. It's not in limited portions and it's not in limited supply. That's really at the heart of what Jesus is trying to say here. And he's also saying that neither is God's grace like wages. Uh, and that's why he makes this story such an outrageous injustice. <laughs> Precisely to get our attention uh, and illustrate the point. He wanted a reaction from, his, from the people who were listening to it and I'm sure he got one. Because if God's love, mercy, and forgiveness and grace were earned, then of course it would be unjust if he gave the latecomers the same as the rest. But that's not how it works. That's not what they are. God's love, mercy, forgiveness and grace are gift. And their gifts, gifts are not earned. They're given. And they're received. They're not allocated 
in terms of how much you have worked. Gifts are a sign of a relationship. And God gives without holding back. Because he is love and he loves us. The vineyard owner says, are you envious because I am generous? When we all have love, mercy, grace, compassion, forgiveness, that we all, and more, that we could ever want or need, what point is there in being jealous of others? And yet he knew, Jesus knew, that certainly in the sight and the understanding of some of his listeners, that would be precisely what they were feeling. Rather, Jesus is saying to us, we should rejoice that they too have found what we have discovered. The end of the story of the prodigal son, the answer is, you know, rejoice because the one who was lost has been found. You know, we've had, actually things have been restored, things are good, this is good. Likewise, uh, what we have received from God is not something for us to, as it were, uh, harbour for ourselves or resent others finding after we have found them. Rather, we should be longing that new people might find what we have already found. There's a piece of that great cake for everybody because it doesn't run out. And it's not really cake. <laughs> God, 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 God's generosity is infinite. And when you slice up infinity, those of you who are mathematicians, you know there's still just as much left as there was before. And that's what God is like. So, don't run a vineyard, like this parable says. It's no way to run a business. If you're running a business, don't follow these instructions. But if you're living in the kingdom of God, and you're thinking about God's generosity and gifts to us, it's exactly what we need to hear. There's plenty for everyone. And may we always rejoice in that. So would you please stand and we'll uh, confirm our faith in the words of the creed. Again, we're using a shorter form from the baptism service. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So would you please be seated for our prayers of intercession. Let us pray to the Lord, who is our refuge and stronghold, for the health and well-being of our nation, that all, all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For the isolated and the housebound, that we may be alert to their needs and care for them in their vulnerability. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. We pray for our homes and families, our schools and young people, and all in any kind of need or distress. And today we pray especially for Linda, Mike Kavanagh's wife, who is in hospital. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Lord, we pray for a blessing on our local community, that our neighbourhoods may be places of trust and friendship, where all are known and cared for. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. hear us. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen.
and as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. If you weren't here last week, we, uh, we, we can't sh- physically share the peace with one another, but we do use the words, and uh, wait, more, more people say it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's peace be with you. Be with you. So you do a feel. So it's peace be with you all. Right, okay. Have you got that? <laughs> <laughs> Still that again? Yeah. Without it. Oh, let me put my other microphone on. Right. So it's peace be with you all. Margie, you can you, Margie will model it <laughs> while I uh, while I say the words. Right. First of all, we'll have the proper words to introduce it. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in His name and share His peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And now. Things that we're unable to do at the moment is take a collection in terms of passing anything round, uh, but nonetheless, I know that many generous gifts have been coming in uh, throughout our lockdown period, and I think it's important that we acknowledge that generosity uh, in the context of our worship. And so, we say together, acknowledging all of God's gifts to us, Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children, and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our love, that we might live in him, and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross, and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave him thanks. He broke it and gave it to him, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, Taking the cup of wine, he gave him thanks and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. 
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. So let us pray. Keep our Lord your church with your perpetual mercy, and because without you our human frailty cannot but fall, keep us ever by your help from all things hurtful, and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. I've published the balance of marriage between Lee John Clark and Rebecca Bridie Watson, both of the parish of St John and St Martin, Beverley Minster, and on the electoral roll of this parish. This is for the third time of asking. If you know any reason in law why these persons may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. And they are very relieved by the deafening silence that follow that. And we're still, you know, keep praying that we'll be open <laughs> at the end of October uh, for, for the wedding itself so uh, we, we're hoping and praying that's going to be the case and it's been a really you know, really feel for you that we're in the middle of this uh, uncertain time but um, we will do whatever we can uh, that we're allowed to do uh, to make that happen right Before the final blessing, there is a, another song of worship, and uh, I think you probably recognise it. It's uh, Shantable.
So the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. <laughs>